Hi everyone. So, who remembers last year when completely out of nowhere, sea shanties just got massive on TikTok and suddenly they were everywhere? It was absolutely crazy, right? They're like 600 years old and suddenly there's this like whole resurgence in popularity where like hashtag sea shanty on TikTok gets like 1.6 billion views, probably even more now. It kind of came out of nowhere, surprised everyone, and all of a sudden we're all like, these are actually really good. Hmm. But what exactly is a sea shanty? Why are they so popular and catchy? And why is Weller Man, the song that got so popular and big and absolutely blew up on TikTok, actually an incredibly dark and gruesome tale with a pretty gross history? That's what we're going to be looking at in today's video. We're going to be looking at the history of sea shanties, learning all about them, and if you stick around to the end of the video, I have a really, really amazing surprise because one of my favourite people in the world, James Wade, has recorded his own version of a sea shanty, especially for this video, uh, for me and for you guys, and it is incredible. I cannot wait to share it with you. So, let's jump into the video. We have records of sea shanties going all the way back to the mid 1400s and despite what some myths might perpetuate, they weren't really sung by pirates or the navy or anything like that, but mostly by merchant sailors. Shanties are quite literally working songs. Sailors would sing them together in groups in order to keep time with each other and synchronise movements and of course to make really difficult, often unpleasant tasks a little more bearable. Think of acts like raising sails or pumping water, hard jobs, repetitive tasks which required all the men to perform the same action at the same time. Sea shanties would do that, they would keep everyone working in time. It was poetry with a purpose. I've spoken a lot in other videos about rhythm and meter in poetry and how it serves a purpose. Usually it's to set a tone for a poem or make you feel something, convey an emotional state or even emphasise certain words or phrases to show you which bits of the poem you should be looking at and focusing on. Sea shanties were similar, only slightly more practical. So they used rhythm and repetition to tell workers when to perform a certain action and because of this they needed to be easy to learn, easy to remember and were obviously incredibly catchy. And as I think we all know today, they had melodies that got stuck in your head. All of this explains why they perform so well on TikTok today. Now before we jump any further into today's video, long videos like this take a lot of work and research and time and they aren't always ad friendly or they don't always get the views. So it's thanks to sponsors like today's that I can keep making videos and content like this for you. So here's a brief word about them. I'm really, really pleased to say that today's video is sponsored by the incredible company that is Ren. And it's a very, very fitting sponsor for today's video because obviously one of the downfalls for sea shanties was the increasing technology of merchant ships, of course, as technology increased there, so did carbon emissions. And that is something that affects us all in our everyday lives. Today, we are super, super reliant on technology and we all have a carbon footprint. And even taking small steps to reduce that can really, really help the environment and help reduce the effects of climate change. REN is an incredible tool that helps you calculate your own carbon footprint, gives you ideas of how you can help reduce it yourself, and you can make contributions to carbon reduction funds and are overall just a fantastic, fantastic company. Of course, no one can completely reduce their carbon footprint to zero, but we can all do little things that make an effort to help overall. And by everyone doing a little bit, it really, really helps. With REN, you can help fund projects like replanting of trees, rainforest protection, um, helping make sure people are burning clean fuels only. And when you choose a project to support, you get photos and regular updates about where your money's going and how it's helping reduce carbon emissions and hopefully help reduce the effects of climate change. So if you'd like to offset your carbon footprint with REN, I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. And the first 100 people who sign up using the link in my video description get an extra 10 trees planted in their name. And I cannot overstate how important I think projects like this are and how much I support them, which is why I'm really, really, really happy to be working with REN on this. So once again, a huge huge thank you to Ren for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back into the topic of sea shanties. So generally on a merchant ship you would have someone called a shanty man of whom it's often said a good shanty man on board was worth at least a couple of extra hands. So these guys were not like you know it wasn't just an easy job they were respected they were useful. 
The shanty man would be the one to literally lead the songs in a sort of call and response style, a style which is thought to have originated back in Africa, which is not at all surprising when you consider where a lot of the merchant ships sailed and their routes and where their ports were. Merchant crews were often incredibly multicultural. They'd literally pick up workers from all over the world and with them they'd bring their music, their stories, their culture, their history and share them with one another. Black sailors in particular played a huge, huge important and sadly often overlooked role in the UK's maritime history. Black sailors have been a key part of British merchant and navy crews for at least the last 450 if not 500 years and it was one of the first jobs where black and white men and actually all people of colour were able to work alongside each other as equals on many but sadly not all ships. However, it wasn't just easy for them, they still faced a lot of danger and inequality in a lot of places. So for example, when a ship came into port and the sailors set foot on land, racial divides that were kind of often... <sighs> well they just weren't really there on some ships. The minute these sailors set foot back on line these racial divides became more apparent and sometimes crews would turn on each other for the sake of fitting in to wherever they were. But that was nothing in comparison to some of the dangers that black crew members faced. Often when sailing through America and the West Indies there was a huge chance of merchant ships being captured and any black sailors being sold into slavery. Sometimes for the sake of a little bit of quick fast money captains would even turn on their own crews and instead of you know paying these men who have been working for them for however many months, they would literally sell them into slavery themselves. It was disgusting. Not all though, there were many, many good captains who just saw um, people of colour as just any other crewmate and treated them with a hell of a lot of respect and well just like any other sailor really. But it's kind of crazy because like especially for black sailors they were literally risking their lives and freedom more than pretty much anyone else on those ships and their stories are so often overlooked and not spoken about and I think it's really worth acknowledging and respecting everything that they did because they played a huge huge part in the world's maritime history but especially in the UK's which I don't think a lot of people realise or I guess, understand. Anyway, the point is, for the most part, merchant and navy ships were both kind of big melting pots of all different cultures. And that's why sea shanties were influenced by a diverse range of cultures and you'll find all kinds of songs with all different influences about all different kinds of people and places. Like I say, the particular call and response style that a lot of sea shanties had, it's said to have originated in Africa, which was because a lot of their music had the same kind of call and response style to it, where you'd have someone singing a line and then a group would respond back with another line. And this was used in many, many shanties. You'd have the shanty man sing a line or a verse and then the crew member would call out another line in response and on that line they would usually perform an action together in unison. I say a line, it could have been a short chorus or a refrain or something like that. But the point is their response lines were usually a signal for an action to be carried out by all of them at once. So take one of the oldest sea shanties we know as an example, Hall on the Bow Line, which is thought to have been around since the 1500s. The shanty man would call out the line, Hall on the Bow Line, the bully ships are rolling, and the crew would sing back, Hall on the Bow Line, the bow line haul. And quite literally on the word haul, they would haul the bow line as they sung it. Simple, simple songs, but they got the point across. <laughs> and for those of you not familiar with ships in, you know, the 1500s, which might be quite a few of you, you know, I don't think it's a common interest for all that many people. Um, but the bow line was basically this rope leading from the deck to the edge of a sail and it was used to pull the sail as far windward as possible when the ship is underway. So hauling on the bow line would literally move the position of the sails. So then again, following this, the shantyman would call out a line like, haul on the bow line, Kitty is my darling, and the crew would respond with, haul on the bow line, the bow line haul and then haul again on that last word, haul, and so on and so on through a number of verses and choruses and so on. You can see the entire song here for yourself. <laughs> Please remember that while I'm talking mostly about shanties in English in this video, uh, specifically with shanties originally in, in England, and Australia and I think maybe a couple of American ones as well, it's important to note that all kinds of cultures had their own shanties. This wasn't just an anglicized, anglicized thing, is that the word? An Anglic thing, an Angle. It, it wasn't just an English thing. Literally, sea shanties were worldwide. There are all kinds of shanties in other languages as well. One last thing to note on the history of shanties is that although records of shanties being sung at sea have been around since like the 1400s, the word shanty itself wasn't actually used 
or recorded in use in England until 1869. So it's unclear what they were called or referred to before then. Some people believe that the word shanty originates from the French verb chanter, meaning to sing, whereas others think it comes from the English word chant, meaning to chant. So who knows, maybe it's a little bit of both. It's really, really interesting because shanties were taught on ships to other sailors and passed on between ships and soon spread all over the world. The same shanty could be sung by a bunch of different people and passed on and then crews would split up and go and teach it to their new crews and whatever. So I guess in this sense, you could say that shanties were quite literally the original viral trend. The problem is there were very few records of them. There were literally thousands of shanties out there, but they were never written down. They were passed on by word of mouth and taught between crews and people just by being told to each other and remembered. So, as technology improved and steam power became a thing and the crews needed for ships got smaller and smaller and the types of jobs you had to do on ships became smaller and smaller, the need for shanties also decreased. As less and less shanties were sung, soon there was a risk that they'd be forgotten altogether. That is until people like Cecil James Sharp decided to start keeping records. In the late 1800s, Cecil travelled all around England's coastal towns and fishing villages and ports and interviewed tons of retired sailors and made a note of all the sea shanties that they remembered. He wrote down music for them if they had music, he wrote down um, all the lyrics and variations of lyrics, he made a note of like what the melodies were and how they went and so on, and he published a collection of them in 1914 called English Folk Shanties. He was one of a couple of people who did this, but he's probably the most notable and the one who made the biggest contribution. And this 1914 collection is a wonderfully useful collection and without him we would have lost so much wonderful music and a huge part of our history. But it's not perfect. There are some major problems. A big, big criticism of Cecil is that he was a bit of a racist and sexist pig, to put it politely. He refused to interview or collect music from any women and from any people of colour, and he often just downplayed their work and didn't think it was really significant or worth the same as anyone else, which is of course ridiculous. Cecil Sharp is someone who collected lots of folk music from all around uh, the country and I think maybe some parts of Europe as well but I may be making that up so double check that. But he was, he was big into his folk music, um, sea shanties just being a part of that. And the fact that he refused to interview and talk to and work with so many people and minorities is just absolutely heartbreaking because think of how much work and history and music and just amazing stuff we lost out on just because this man was a racist, misogynistic, probably insecure little man. Once again, we miss out on so much amazing stuff because of ignorance and hatred. So that's the sad part of sea shanties, but we do still have records of many, many, many of them, and they're the ones we can talk about today. So with this in mind, let's discuss the different types of sea shanties. Now, some scholars get really, really pedantic about this, and they say that the only true sea shanties are the ones which are sung, and they don't have any musical ac accompaniments. The minute you add a musical accompaniment, it's no longer a sea shanty, it's simply a sea song. There's so many S's in this video and it's really hard for me to say, I'm struggling a bit. <laughs> While that distinction is worth noting, especially if you're interested in this academically and want to look at the history of shanties in a more academic way and a more kind of precise way and you you like those kinds of details it's important to note this but for the sake of this video it's not hugely important we're talking about all kinds of sea sh songs in this video today all kinds of songs that did start out as the traditional voice only shanties are now sung with a musical accompaniment to make them more interesting or fun or just kind of update them and for the purpose of this video we're going to be discussing both them and some more traditional sea songs which even at the time were sung with musical accompaniments just because they're interesting so what kinds of shanties and sea songs are there many to give you the short answer. <laughs> and they can be broken down into all kinds of categories and subcategories, and they're what we're gonna be looking at right now. First up, you have hauling shanties and hauling songs, which are exactly what they sound like. Songs which were sung when doing anything that involved hauling, such as pulling ropes to hoist and lower sails and flags and so on. Songs in this category can be split further into subcategories, such as short haul shanties, uh, such as Hole on the Bowline, which we mentioned earlier, 
and these were sung when bursts of energy and short but intense pulls were needed, for example, when unfurling sails. Another category would be haul yard shanties, in which the word haul yard literally means to haul a yard. These weren't quick tasks and they required a more sustained effort over a period of time. Still hauling though, don't get me wrong. So consider short haul shanties like sprints and haul yard shanties are more like marathons, but with hauling tasks instead of running. That analogy worked in my head, I don't know if it translated to real life. So your whole yard shanties were for tasks like things like raising heavy sails, for example. The work was harder, it was slower, it took longer, you had to pull for longer. So keeping everyone in time throughout really increased efficiency and was really, really important. And that's why whole yard shanties were a really, really useful tool when completing these tasks. I'd argue that some of the most famous and recognizable sea shanties of all time are examples of whole yard shanties. For example, Drunken Sailor and Blow the Man Down, which I think most people will have heard of at some point in their lives. Drunken Sailor, for example, is not only a cautionary tale for sailors, but it's said to have been sung, sung when tacking, which isn't exactly a haul in terms of pulling, but it does involve lots of hammering to secure something in place with tacks. So it's still a kind of long sustained effort that needed people to be working in time constantly. Um, it takes its iconic melody from an old Irish dance song. And when you listen to it, you can kind of imagine all the men there hammering together in time to the beat. And I think that's really, really cool. Our next big category are heaving shanties, which sound like they should be the same. What's the difference between a haul and a heave? There is one, trust me. So as the name suggests, Heaving shanties were sung when there was a particular emphasis on everyone pulling the same thing or performing the same task with the same piece of equipment together at the same time. Hi Coop, do you want to come up? A steady rhythm was important for many, many tasks, but especially these. So within this category, you have subcategories as well. For example, capstan shanties for things like raising the anchor by turning the capstan, which took literally hours, sometimes a full day was needed to raise an anchor. You also have the very similar pumping shanties, which was sung during the long, hard, boring task of pumping water from the depths of leaky ships, which needed to happen pretty much all day, every day on a lot of boats. Because these tasks were particularly hard and boring and repetitive and not very interesting at all, the lyrics of these shanties in particular were often incredibly cheeky or bawdy as they're often described. You're a bawdy girl. Cover your ears, child. You're too young to hear this. Sea shanties and their lyrics were absolutely not politically correct by today's standards, or probably by anyone's standards ever. <laughs> Let's be honest. They're often dirty, a bit naughty, with lots of references to drinking and gambling, and of course, sex and women. There were also lots of references to ports where ships would dock and places frequently traveled by sailors. So you'll see the same names repeated often throughout lots of songs. Um, a big one you'll see is Liverpool, for example, which was one of the big major ports in the UK, isn't it, Coops? And if you go there today, it is home to the most incredible maritime museum, which is one of my favourite places ever. And I love it and thoroughly recommend it if you're in Liverpool. But honestly, the places and names were often interchangeable in songs and depending on the crew and the ship and where it was going and what they were doing and what inside jokes they all had between them, the lyrics would constantly change and the references would constantly change, wouldn't they? Women were sung about in a lot of shanties, sometimes romanticized, but nearly always objectified. So as a woman, I have mixed feelings. There was a trend of referring to all women from a particular location by one certain name. So women from Australia were all Sheila, women from the Caribbean were Sally, Londoners were Julie, uh, Liverpoolians were Judy. So similar but different. And you could kind of tell where a song was about by what women they referred to, for example. Uh, they did a similar thing with men too though, which is why you'll see a lot of the male characters in sea shanties referred to as Johnny or Paddy or so on because there were also a lot of Irish sailors, weren't there? It is kind of interesting. Look at the shanty Round the Corner Sally as an example. This was more of a short haul shanty, but you know, it, it gets this point across. Um, it features the lines, oh Sally Brown, she's the gal for me, Round the Corner Sally. She's waiting there by the mango tree, Round the Corner Sally. She loves me good and she loves me long, Round the Corner Sally. She loves me hot and she loves me strong. <laughs> 
Or for an even more explicit one, take a look at the heaving shanty called a roving, or it's sometimes known as the Maid of Amsterdam. It features lines such as, to give you an abridged version, In Amsterdam there lived a maid, and she was mistress of her trade. I met this fair maid after dark, and took her to her favourite park. I put my hand upon her knee, she says, young man, you're rather free. I put my hand upon her thigh, she said, young man, you're rather high. She swore that she'd be true to me, but spent my payday fast and free. <laughs> There's also just some flat out misogynistic lyrics, such as in the Holyard Shanty, Haul Away Joe, which goes, again, the abridged version. For once I had a German girl, but she got fat and lazy. But then I got an Irish girl who damn near drove me crazy. Then I had a Yankee girl, she called me her new honey. She kissed me neat, she kissed me sweet, until she spent my money. So, um, yeah, interesting representations of women. <sighs> in the songs predominantly sung and written by men. <laughs> but back to the heaving shanties, and also in this category, you have the subcategory of the very, very interesting whaling shanties. These were usually sung specifically on whaling ships and were often about, you guessed it, whaling. Well, man, the song that went so viral on TikTok and got crazy popular is one example of a whaling shanty and it's the one that kind of started the shanty trend last year. And it's interesting because it sounds like such a light-hearted, nice melody on the surface, but when you actually listen to and understand the lyrics, it's incredibly dark and a bit gruesome. Whaling is a barbaric trade that goes back to the 1700s. It was a filthy, dirty job for absolutely everyone involved, but there was a hell of a lot of money in it if you were the captain of a ship or ran a whaling company, not so much for the people who did the actual work. You might know about whaling from its influence in literature and other media. For example, Herman Melville's 1851 novel Moby Dick is quite literally about whaling. And of course, Nathan Evans brought Willamant to fame on TikTok and so on. Wellamant gets its name from a whaling station and company based in New Zealand, which was run by the Weller brothers, and it's thought to have been created in the 1860s. Its structure is slightly more like a folk ballad than some of the sea shanties we've discussed and used as examples in this video so far, in that it has a fairly strong narrative throughout, and it has these four-line stanzas, although a typical folk ballad rhyme scheme is more a, B, A, B, whereas this is A, 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 B, so it has a different rhyme scheme, so it's, it, it's not a folk ballad, but it's influenced by folk ballads. That said, thanks to its repeated chorus and its call and response form when sung, and the fact that originally it didn't have a musical accompaniment at all, it's definitely similar to other sea shanties and, and can be absolutely called a sea shanty, in particular a whaling shanty. While the song sounds really, really jovial on the surface, the lyrics are actually rather dark. And for example of this, we're just gonna be looking at the chorus. Soon the well man come to bring us sugar, tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. This refers to the joy that the family and friends of sailors would feel when a whaling ship came back into dock after many years away, bringing with them their pay, which wasn't often money, but was literally in the form of sugar, tea and rum. But the later line is what's really interesting. The mention of tonguing, I, is, oh god, it's not nice actually. It refers to the job of stripping the blubber from whales that had been caught so that it could be rendered into oil. It was a crucial job which made a lot of money, but it was absolutely disgusting and filthy and smelly and, oh, not nice at all. And if you want to get even darker, please consider the original purpose of this song. It was literally thought that sailors would have sung this as they had to cut into the whales that they caught and slice them into more portable chunks. Quite different to the cozy TikTok videos we see today. And then finally, you have four bitter songs, which some say aren't shanties at all, but I think are important and influential enough to talk about and include in this video. Unlike the others, these songs weren't necessarily sung to keep time for any specific job, but more often they were sung on these merchant ships during free time and relaxing, and were more about the storytelling than anything else. Because of this, they're a little less dirty and cheeky and offensive than some of the working shanties. Their lyrics tended to be a little deeper and a little nicer and a little more emotional and focused more on a narrative and story being told. 
I am incredibly lucky that the wonderful James Wade has agreed to record a version of one of these four bit songs for us, especially for my video. And I'm really, really excited by this. It came out sounding absolutely incredible. And I am so, so excited to share this with you. This song is Kennedy I.O. And it tells the story of a young man who falls in love with a woman and insists on sneaking her onto his ship while he's away working as a merchant sailor so he doesn't have to leave her behind. However, when the crew find out, things start to turn a little bit sad hour and well you'll hear what happens. <laughs> I'm gonna play you a small part of James's recording now but the full song has about five or six verses so if you'd like to hear the full thing and hear the full narrative and find out what ends up happening to this woman in this story slash song you can go check out the full version over on James's channel which I will leave linked in the video description and as a pinned comment as well. Handsome girl, she's all in her tender years. She fell in love with a sailor boy, and it's true that she loved him well. Far to go off to sea with him, like she did not know how. She longed to see that seaport town called Canada. She bargained with a young sailor boy It's all for a piece of gold Straight away then he led her on Down into the hole Saying I'll dress you up in sailor's clothes Your jacket shall be blue You'll see that seaport town of Kennedy Now when the other sailors heard the news They fell into a rage And with the whole ship's company Willing to engage Saying we'll tie her hands and feed me boys Overboard we'll throw her And she'll never see this seaport town called Canadian Please absolutely go send James lots of love and support and thank him so much for recording this for us. I think it's absolutely incredible. So that is pretty much the history of sea shanties done, but what about today? Why are they still relevant? Why am I talking about them? Why have they had a resurgence in popularity? And how have they influenced the music we listen to today? When you think about it, we have briefly touched on this already. Everything that made sea shanties so fit for purpose is exactly why they're still so loved and popular today. They were specifically written to boost morale, to be catchy and easy to remember at a time when it's unlikely the words would ever be written down or recorded anywhere. And all of those things still apply today. They make you happy, they boost morale, they kind of make you laugh at the cheeky and offensive lyrics. They're incredibly catchy and they stick in your head and you want to listen to them more. You end up singing them to yourself in your head even when you don't want to. Sure, the lyrics may be outdated and a little offensive and we might not understand all the references in them, but we can all recognize and appreciate a damn catchy tune when we hear one. And that is something that will outlast and span across all time periods and culture, regardless of what the content of the lyrics actually is. The fact that they're quite simple and rely mostly on just like a handful of voices and a steady rhythm mean that they're really accessible for so many people to enjoy and get involved with if they want to too. It's impossible to deny the influence that sea shanties have had on our current music too. Their use of rhythm and catchy hooks heavily influenced a lot of blues music and 
that went on to influence a hell of a lot of the music we have today. Plus some of the most popular bands and songwriters out there like the Beatles and Bob Dylan, even if it's subtle, directly referenced sea shanties and were influenced by them in their songwriting and lyrics. For more obvious examples, take something like my favourite ever band Stornoway, who wrote their own sea shanty Josephine back in 2014-2015 for their album Bonksy. Back when they were together I saw them live probably I don't know, seven, eight, nine times. I, I'm a huge fan, okay? I love them. And the few times I saw them perform, Josephine was just absolutely magical. One time in particular, like, sticks in my head because, like, they did an acoustic a cappella version in a church, and it's just four men's voices in this room with the most beautiful acoustics, just like, oh god, the way it resonated around the room, the story it told, the melody, it just you got so swept up in the story and their voices and it's so beautifully catchy and it's just to this day like one of the best things I've ever experienced. It was wonderful. And then of course you have kind of maybe more niche interests like you have shanty festivals that still happen today. Uh, the biggest one in the UK takes place down in Falmouth in Cornwall and now that I know about it I think I need to go. I, I really really want to go. And then you also have films like the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, games like Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and TV series like The Black Sails, which admittedly focus more on pirates than merchant ships. But together, the way they kind of penetrated popular culture has helped stir up more interest in sea shanties over the last like couple of decades and sea song sea songs in general. And then, of course, once the pandemic happened and we were all kind of stuck in our houses, and honestly, morale was a little low and we were all kind of like a little unhappy. It's kind of unsurprising that after everything, there was another resurgence in the popularity of sea shanties, perhaps bigger than ever before. Sea shanties were designed to bring people together and that's exactly what they did over lockdown. Nathan Evans as well, a man was just one example, but there were countless others who followed. TikTok as well also kind of gave a resurgence in popularity to uh, Dorina Harvey's band's incredible rendition of The Last Shanty, which is a fantastic song. They originally released their version in 2016 and it had this big resurgence of lockdown again, thanks to TikTok. And that is just a fascinating song in its own right, actually. It's kind of a modern sea shanty, but one which is so incredibly aware of the changing times. And again, it gives us a kind of almost like insight into the changing nature of work on ships and it's really really interesting. The Last Shanty was originally written in 1987 by Tom Lewis and despite being a traditional sounding sea shanty it tells of how being a sailor today is so different from what it was back in the day in like the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s you know to the point where the kind of repeated chorus of the song is a sailor ain't a sailor anymore. You know there's more safety rules now, there's regulations now, there's all this stuff that you can't do, a lot of the old tasks have been replaced by modern machinery and the jobs are being phased out, and the lyrics reflect this. Don't haul on the rope, don't climb up the mast, if you see a sailing ship it might be your last. And then later on, uh, they gave us an engine that first went up and down, then with more technology the engine went around, we know our steam and diesels but what's a main yard for? A stoker ain't a stoker with a shovel anymore. But then one of the final verses and kind of the climax of the song, and this is the bit that really really got popular on TikTok, um, talks of just like beer and having a drink with other sailors and you know going to shore and pulling into a port and just kind of like having a laugh with the people you work with you know. So we'll put on our silly clothes and find a pub ashore, a sailor's just a sailor just like he was before. So it kind of ends on this sweet note of how some things don't change, like everyone coming together to enjoy a drink and company at the end of a really really long hard working day you know. I guess kind of in this shanty like alcohol is the binding force that brings people together just like sea shanties used to be back on the old ships. So it's a fun little parallel and something that I just find a little bit interesting and kind of cute, you know? But they are just my thoughts and this is where I'm going to be ending today's video. If you'd like to find out more please check out my list of sources down in the video description. There's some further reading, there's some book recommendations including the one that inspired this video, and please check out James Wade's full cover of Canada D.I.O. Uh, which is going to be linked in the video description. If you enjoyed this video please consider leaving a like, subscribing to my channel of course, and leaving a comment to let me know what's your favourite sea shanty or sea shanty inspired song or let me know some other fun facts that you know or if you have any video suggestions or requests please let me know down there as well. Once again thank you to James for helping me out with this video and of course thank you to Ren for sponsoring this video and making it all possible. Um, and with that in mind 
thank you so much for watching today. I appreciate your help a lot and I'll see you all again really, really soon.